Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Enrique Castro, Jr. My pronouns are he and him. I am the current president of Reading Pride Celebration. So I have the honor of standing in this room with so many amazing people, including Mayor Moran, Senator Swank, Councilwoman Donna Reed, Michelle Deck of the LGBT Center, Sarah Marin, who will be speaking with us a little bit later, and so many others. So thank you for coming today as we make history yet again in Reading. So two years ago, almost two years ago, um, on the steps of City Hall here in June, we made history by raising the pride flag for Pride Month. It was for the second time in Reading, but we say we made history because it was the first time that flag was raised uncontested, where the mayor stood side by side with myself and others, and we raised that flag in celebration of our Pride Month. So today, I stand here and we make history again. This time we're celebrating members of our transgender community. Today is International Transgender Day of Visibility. And after we are done uh, with our remarks today, we're gonna be raising the transgender flag to celebrate all of the contributions and accomplishments of our transgender siblings. So in the past few years, there have been many accomplishments uh, for the trans community. We've had actors and actresses be nominated and win awards. We've had more trans folk run for and win more elections than ever before. Our very own Dr. Rachel Levine led the state of Pennsylvania through probably the worst pandemic any of us will ever remember and got us all through it safely and is now serving the whole country in Washington, D.C. as one of the highest serving transgender officials in the country and probably the world. And then just today, President Biden made an announcement of his own in celebration of Transgender Day of Visibility, where our trans siblings won't be forced to select male or female on a United States passport or go through craziness at the Social Security Administration. There are gonna be options and everybody's being forced to change. And they're not gonna be forced to go through TSA screenings based off of what the gender on their driver's license says, whether an M or an F. The TSA is being forced to reevaluate their screening process which is a major win for our transgender community. I don't know about any of you, but if you've ever been subject to that additional security screening at the airport, some of them you know, get a little bit touchy. Well, if it's not the right person doing the screening, it can be very uncomfortable. So that is an amazing accomplishment for our community, and that just happened today. As I was uh, writing my remarks, I uh, got the article. But those are just a few. And here locally, we have transgender members of our community all over Pennsylvania making strides for future generations. And they don't announce it. They just do it you know, because they are who they are. And they love helping the community. So they're not running for public office, and they're not uh, winning an Oscar or anything like that, they are helping right here at home. So for the past two years with this COVID, we keep hearing heroes don't only wear capes. Sometimes they wear scrubs. And that's absolutely true. We're all super thankful for the doctors and nurses and all our first responders. But I would add to that comment. And I would say, sometimes our heroes also wear heels, sneakers, fabulous wigs, lipstick, binding wraps, and so many other things. And I'll get to why I've added that to the heroes. Because our trans community members, they are heroes to me. So as a cisgender gay male, I owe a lot of the rights that I have today and even the ability to stand at this podium at City Hall and address all of you. 
to the transgender women of the Stonewall Riots. So Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera are just some to name a few. They're the most well known for being a part of those riots. But when they decided enough was enough with the abuse from the NYPD and everyone else raiding gay bars and attacking people and decided to fight back and march down the streets, that started what we know as the LGBT movement. And over the years, we've acquired many new rights and many new protections. And life's gotten a little bit easier as each generation has gone on for a gay man or for a lesbian woman. But I fear that our trans women, their rights have kind of slowed and gone in slow motion. So today, while we're celebrating all the accomplishments of our amazing trans community, it's also a time to shine a light that the work is not done. There's still so many struggles. Finding yourself and being yourself and being comfortable with who you are and who you know you are is, I would imagine, a struggle in itself internally. You know, the fear of rejection and discrimination and everything else that comes with it. So every day that our trans siblings leave their house facing the world as who they are and who they were meant to be, that's what makes them heroes. They are making life easier for every other person, not just gay, lesbian, or trans, every other person that would be otherwise judged or discriminated against for being who they are. So while our trans siblings don't wear capes, although if they did, some of them might have sequins and other things because, you know, as a community, we do like to decorate things. So I thank you to all of our trans community members, those from, you know, our past, those presently working to make the world a better place. Because without you, so many of us would still be lost in the past, hiding in basements at bars, worried about who was gonna come in and who would be arrested for what. And our trans community started this and they really kept the fight going. So my ask of all of you is let's stand with them. We can raise the flag and celebrate today all of the accomplishments, but until he can be he, she can be she, and they can be them, without anyone questioning the origins. Until equal rights means equal rights for everybody. Until we can all have access to health care and trans health care. Primarily, it's very, it's very important and needed. Until our trans siblings have all the same rights that we all enjoy, the fight is not over. So today we celebrate and we make history by raising that flag at our own city hall here in Reading. But as we leave this building today, I urge you all, think about the role you play in the rights of our transgender community and what we can do, both as LGBTQT community members, but also as allies. I would imagine if you're sitting here in this room on this very special occasion, you're at least an ally. So before you go home tonight, think about the impact you can make on the rights of our LGBTQ community members. Call up your elected officials and demand that changes are made. You know, what President Biden did today was an amazing step, but there's still so much work to do. I am a big history buff. I read of a trans woman in the 1900s who lived her whole life as a woman, married two times. She lost the first husband and married again. Her husband knew you know, who she was. There, there wasn't you know, any kind of surgery that she could go through then. But when it was found out that she was born male, not because of her husband, not because he didn't love her, the police arrested her and brought her in front of a judge and the judge gave her an option. 
go back to being a man and apologize to all those you deceived or go to jail. And I applaud this woman and another hero of our community. Her response to that judge was, I'd rather die in prison as the woman I was meant to be than live my life free as the man I am not. And she did go to jail. And she was released. Her husband waited for her and they rekindled you know, their uh, marriage. And she did what she set out to do. She knew deep inside there was no he. There was never a he. She was always a she. And she stood up for herself. And she died the woman that she knew she was. She died a woman. And now when we look at history, there's a lot of things in history that we choose to forget or not acknowledge, that being one of them. But just because we don't talk about it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. She should have never been given that choice to make by a judge or by anyone. Every one of us needs to be free to be who we are and who we were meant to be. No one can tell you who you are. So for that, again, I thank all of our trans siblings, and I commend you for your bravery and your heroism, not just for our LGBTQ community or for yourselves, but for everything that you are doing to make life just that much bearable for every little boy, little girl, little that he, she, or them that comes after us. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for listening to me, and I'd like to introduce to you Sarah Marin from the board of the LGBT Center. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Sarah Morin. I'm a local educator, member of the board of directors of the LGBT Center of Greater Reading, and a transgender woman. Thank you all for coming uh, to this historic event. I am very, very proud to have been invited to speak today, and I hope you will leave with something to think about after I'm done. After we are finished here, please join us for a reception at uh, Light Fair and networking at the LGBT Center of Greater Reading, which is located at 640 Center Ave. March 31st of each year is International Transgender Day of Visibility. But why do we need a day like today? Why is being visible so important? And what does visibility really mean? The truth is, there is no specific answer to any of those questions. Visibility can mean something different to every transgender person. To me, it means living my life in the manner that I currently do. Demonstrating to the world that transgender individuals can be, have been, and currently are valuable and contributing members to society. To some, it means wearing their transgender identity on their sleeve and letting the world know that they are proud of it every day. <clears throat> to others, <clears throat> excuse me, to others it might simply mean that they are visible to themselves, accepting who they've been their entire life, but not yet ready to be visible to the rest of the world. There is no right or wrong way to be visible. It was on Transgender Day of Visibility four years ago that I finally came to terms with my own gender identity. For years, I'd identified as an occasional cross-dresser and nothing more. But there was something wrong, an urge that, although I thought it was impossible and would never happen, just would not go away. It festered and grew until it negatively impacted areas of my life that I did not want it to, my marriage, my children, in my career. I had become angry, full of anxiety, and depressed, culminating in an attempt on my own life and a hospitalization as a result. While hospitalized, I realized that the solution was to st stop fighting who I am. I needed to feel authentic and proud of who I am 
instead of perpetually playing a role that I had no business playing. I recall how difficult it was to take the, that first step into the wild and share my true self with the world. I decided that posting a photo of myself with makeup in a Facebook makeup group would be a really good litmus test. No one in the group knew me in person, so it was safe, yet a very public space. The response that I received from the women in that group honestly saved my life. They were incredibly supportive, complimentary, and loving. Ironically, this all happened on Transgender Day of Visibility in 2018. I had absolutely no idea of the significance of the events at the time until about a week later when, after creating a new Facebook account with my authentic self, um, I set about exploring the pages of other transgender women, and I suddenly saw a Transgender Day of Visibility um, on their pages. So here we are, it's four years later, and I'm well on my way through my own transition. Literally living a dream that I used to think would never, ever happen. And yet, it feels as if the transgender community has never been under more fire. State legislatures across the country are working to eliminate us in any way possible. They're banning us from competing athletically along with the gender that we identify as. They are criminalizing gender-affirming care for transgender children. You cannot read a news article about trans issues without finding a seemingly infinite comment section that is just full of hate, ignorance, and bigotry. And that is why we need Transgender Day of Visibility. We need to combat the negatives with love, knowledge, and equality. Transgender individuals still have a long way to go. We may have accepted ourselves. The fortunate of us may have been accepted by family and friends. But until the entire world not only accepts us, but welcomes us into society, we still have work to do. Being visible cannot be something that we only do on March 31st of each year. In fact, being visible isn't even enough. We need to take our visibility <clears throat> excuse me, and step it up to the next level. And those of us who are ready need to become advocates. We need to advocate for our community, ourselves, and the countless other transgender people who will follow in our footsteps. So I challenge each of you here today, trans women, trans men, gender fluid and non-binary individuals, and cisgender allies, to step up to the plate as a voice for the uns excuse me, for, as a voice for the silent, an avatar of the unseen, and a role model for the next generation of gender nonconformists. Please join me as we move from being visible in a world that accepts us to being a part of a world that loves us. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. We are in this beautiful Council Chambers of Reading, Pennsylvania. And um, with God's will, weather permitting, we'll be going outside in a few to raise the transgender flag as planned. No stormnesses will stop us from recognizing these individuals. Transgender Day of Visibility recognizes and celebrates the living trailblazers of the trans community. We want to celebrate trans people, lives and joys, not as struggles, but as trumps, and sometimes to be happy about, to be proud of. It's undeniable that the trans community is under unprecedented attack, and we must do them trans justice for focusing on the positive shows all distractors that we are stronger, united, and undefeatable. 
I share this quote in the past and I'm going to share it again. First lady, former first lady, Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high. We believe, I believe, that all trans people, regardless of identity, expressions, or orientation, are enough just as they are. Since January 1st of this year, there have been approximately 196 active bad bills across the country, and that's in 38 different states. And that is from the National Center for Transgender Equality in Washington, D.C., targeting the trans community. These laws are being pushed through not to answer any problems nor to make any lives better anywhere in the country. I invite every single one of you here today and watching virtually to share out your stories of trans joy and trans victory and trans assistance. Transgender Day of Visibility started as a social media movement and under the hashtag you will find thousands and thousands of moving authentic and inspirational stories to say the least. Trans is beauty, and love is love is love is love. Whether you are trans, non-binary, questioning, gender non-conforming, or an ally, in Reading, you can live your true self freely with pride. God bless you all. I'm gonna ask Councilwoman D, uh, Donna Reed, any other council members that walked in? I'm also gonna ask Sarah to please join me. Yeah, come this way. So today, along with city council, I have a proclamation. Whereas today we honor and celebrate the achievements and resiliency of transgender individuals and communities. And whereas all persons deserve to live in a city that respects their dignity, safety, and overall well being by supporting equality and fair treatment for everyone. And whereas members of the transgender community contribute to the growing diversity and prosperity of our city. Although transgender persons continue to face high levels of discrimination, stigma, and bias that can fuel abuse and violence against this community. And whereas Transgender Day of Visibility will honor their journey as we move forward together in the promotion of acceptance and understanding to celebrate the transgender community. Now, therefore, I, Eddie Moran, Mayor of the City of Reading, along with Council, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2022, as Transgender Day of Visibility. Congratulations. You want to join us for a picture? And we're just going to take a quick picture, and then we're going to start going downstairs for the rest of the celebration and raising the flag.